Good morning, everyone, from a slightly wonky Selzy. <laughs> I don't know why that picture is quite so wonky, but uh, I do apologise for it being wonky. Um, hope you're all well. And uh, it's very, very windy down here today, so I'm hoping that it's not quite so bad with you. Um, lovely to see you all here. Morning, Stella, Julie, Teresa, June, Sandra, Terry, Eunice, Margaret, Sarah. Uh, happy birthday, Julie Thomas. I think I saw that it was your birthday today. So um, morning to you. Morning, Tessa. Uh, Marjorie, Kitty. Morning, everybody. And thank you for joining me. And thank you for um, subscribing to me if you have already. And if you haven't, why not? Um, please do, because you do get a chance subscribing, I should say, via YouTube, because then you will get notification when I'm going to be doing something, um, even though you probably know when it is. But just in case things change, you always get the chance to see it then. So hi, everybody. Um, hi, Jane. Hi, Shirley. Hi, Sue. OK, so what we're going to do? Well, now. Um, oh, got one missing there, haven't I? on a special project. Oh, I know where it is. I know where it is. Just as well. Okay, so we are going to do some twisted frames today. And um, so because it's a fancy Friday, I'm going to do a fancy flower. And I fancy doing the pansy. So that's what we're going to do. Um, so this is the die sets that I'm going to be using. This is the stitch dot from um, Press Cut square in squares which we still have got in stock it's the plain ones that we're waiting for um they have now docked but we've got to wait for them to clear customs and that could be another couple of weeks or more at the moment normally it would only be a couple of days but at the moment it's taking a bit longer so that's what we're using and underneath here i have as well the pansy die which is a very funny die when you look at it in terms of it's um a, a sort of a funny shape really but it goes with the matching stamp and the stamp I've got it all set up on here actually but the stamp is like this a very well used one as you can see um, but it works so much better when it's like that and I really wouldn't do it in any other color than black to be honest with you um, and that's what we're going to use as well so I am first of all going to do the beautiful frame for it and then prepare to be amazed about how easy the pansy is and how lifelike I think that the pansy looks like. It's not a new one. It has been around a little while, um, but it is a lovely one nonetheless. So I'm going to be working with a seven by seven card and I've already done some layers for it. So I have taken these layers and I'm just going to glue them down so that we can get them um, setting before we've done anything. So seven by seven cards. And then I have got um, pine tree as the first layer of card. So the colour of this card is pine tree. So they are crafts to um, linen card. So that's going there with a very small border all the way around. Then I've gone on top of that with avocado green. And it is just a little tiny bit um, smaller, just about an eighth of an inch smaller. I could cut it with my nesting dies, but I haven't done. And that gives me just a very nice contrast colour, but just a little bit of a border there. And then... I'm not going to pop this one on yet, but this one is a white um, bit. And again, it's just an eighth of an inch smaller all the way around. I want to stamp on that, so I'm not going to stick that down. So I've ju just got my card base, which I'll now put onto one side. So I also have the two pieces that were left over from cutting out the backgrounds there in that colour. So we've got the pine and the avocado. And I'm going to make um, a couple of frames with those. So I'm going to take my nesting squares and in this case for the seven by seven I'm going to take die number six if I count it from the centre. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh. Get one and then I'm going to miss one and take die seven because I want it to have about a centimetre border, but you could obviously make this a much smaller border 
if you prefer. So I'm going to use the trick that the lovely John Lockwood does. I can get my tape. Oh, move my computer around. I know that doesn't move you around, but it did move my computer around. That's better. I'm still wonky, aren't I? It's probably better wonky, to be honest. Uh, and I'm just going to pick up the centre one like that and then hover above the other one so that I can, as near as damn it, get it in the right place. Whoops. Mm, can't talk while I'm doing that. <laughs> and then pick up that one as well so that I've got a nice frame there. And I'm going to stick this, first of all, onto the avocado one. And I'm going to run that through my machine. Like so. Hold on a second. Oh, everyone's singing. What looks like a mushroom? What have I missed? What looks like a mushroom? What looks like a mushroom? Here's my beautiful frame. I'm going to just take this off of there and carefully just peel that down. Whoops. And then I'm going to take my pine green. Oh, the pansy. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> Yeah, it does. We will transform a mushroom into a pansy. How about that? Right, just pin that one through. And then now, yesterday I was watching on YouTube a video from someone that has thousands of followers. And she was saying about how, um, I must admit, I didn't watch all of the video. So maybe, maybe she went on to say something else afterwards. But the first 10 minutes of it was saying about how um, you can watch all these um, people on YouTube and on Pinterest and how they make lovely cards and how you think that you can make them as well. And then you buy all the products and you realise that you can't make them. You can't do what, the, what they said on on YouTube. And so I thought to myself, well, do you know what? I thought that was a bit of a funny attitude because I do think that what I am going to do is show you a card that you could easily replicate if you had some of the items. You can use any flowers. You do need a square die of some sort, but it doesn't have to be the one that we've got. Um, but I just thought you can do all these things. It isn't rocket science and just take it steady you've got the youtube video to watch afterwards if you're not quite sure and off you go now if you saw um craft cave live yeah last night john was doing some of the twisted frames as i'm calling them but with the oval and they were making them into sort of like a celtic knot well i have to say that i lost lost it there I couldn't do it and I thought well how do we do it with just more simple so I've taken the two green pieces and I'm going to put them one on top of the other like that now I could actually stick that down first one and then the other one and that would be okay but let's just make it into a knot so that it stays so I've got the one on the bottom and I'm putting this one on the top. I could do it either way. It doesn't matter. But I'm going to put this one on the top. So the two opposite corners are all we need to think about. So the top one, I'm going to place that underneath that. Like that. OK, so it was the top one. Just this top corner just goes underneath. And then the bottom corner also goes underneath but we need to just persuade it to. Here we are, sorted. I think anyone could do that. But we'll just do it once more so that you know. So we have a one on the bottom, one on the top. 
This one needs to just go underneath and then the opposite corner also needs to go underneath but needs a little bit more persuasion and then we're stuck. Yeah, I reckon that's quite simple, don't you? So let us bring in our white piece of card that was going to be our card front and I want to pop a sentiment onto it. So before I stick anything down on here, I want to place that sentiment in place. And this is the sentiment that I've had for a little while, but I'm afraid it is not, um, it's not sold in this country. So, but it's not from China. So I don't think it is because <laughs> I wouldn't do that. Um, I was given it. So, um, well, I suppose it is from China ultimately. I'm going to pop my um, twisted frame towards the top. I could put it in the center, but I want to have just that sentiment there. And so I'm going to grab myself a um, stamping platform. And I have to say, it's possibly the dirtiest one I've ever seen, but whatever. Whatever. Just take that to one side. And you can see that just stays there now. So let's pop this into place. And I'm just going to pop that back so that I know where I want that to be. And then my sentiment is going to go down there in that corner. So I'm going to pick that up like that. And then I'm going to take a, hmm, a bit of rainforest, shall we go for? Or shall we go for green oasis? Oh, golly, decisions, decisions. Oh, I don't know, I don't know. Not going to go for any of them. I'm going to go for Monarch because I'm going to go mauve in a minute. So, just going to stamp that up, ink that up, I should say, pop that down into that corner so that I know that that's going to be in the right place and ready to go. Okay. So, let's pop that to one side and. Bring back my card to pop this in. I just check that I've got this round the right way. So that's going to go onto there like that. A little bit of glue. And that will go down, leaving it with a bit of a border all the way around, which looks rather pretty. And then our frame is going to go into the center there. So I'm going to, um, I don't, I can just put, I'm just thinking whether I could put glue. I will just pop glue all the way around so it won't be as such stuck together, but there's enough glue holding that all the way around. Like that. So I'm gonna bring that down just so that that's centered if I can, like that. And I think that looks nice on itself, but let's put, so you could, if you were changing this in any shape or form, you could put a big sentiment in there, you could put decoupage in the middle, you could do all sorts, but I think it gives a really nice frame just from that. But today I want to pop some lovely pansies in the centre of this. So let's again pop that to one side. And I've already got my pansy stamp set up there. And again, I'm going to do pansies in an easy way, as far as I'm concerned. So you can... If real life pansies are beautiful and they are in all different shapes and colours and whatever, don't think you could ever find a more varied one than this. And this one is no different. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp it in grey, could do black, but I'm going to do it in grey onto a piece of, um, I'm going to say what colour it is and I can't think. 
But anyway, a dark mauve. So it's a dark mauve because I want to have most of the work done for me in this case. I, as I said, if you get into making your pansies, you can make um, they look beautiful stamped out onto white cards and then a lot of colour put onto them. But I'm going to do it so that it's easy lifestyle. We like easy. So there we are, all stamped out. And I'm just going to try and find my heat gun. Just, oh, oh blimey. Sorry, it got caught up then. Just want to dry it off a little bit. So bear with me. Just want to make sure that the ink is dry because I want to put some more ink on top of it. So it is a quick drying ink. I'll just pop that bit extra. So then I'm going to take an eye zinc pigment in yellow. This is a slow dry one. And I'm going to pick that up with a dauber. And then when I look at my flower, you can see, hopefully you'll be able to see as well, that you've got sort of a pattern. So one flower is made up with one shape like that and one shape like that. OK, so you've got four flowers there all together and I'm simply going to wherever um, this shape is, I'm going to put my yellow up as far as that first line. And I'm just dabbing it on. OK, and then when I'm coming to that shape, I'm going to do it up as far as that darkest piece. And I'm going all over it like that so that you cannot see, basically. So you can put on as much or as little as you like, but I want you to be able to see it. So I'm going to pop on a fair bit. So I'm just dabbing it on. You could do pigment ink, but I found that, uh, sorry, um, dye ink. But you, I have found that with the pigment ink, it still blends a little bit because it's still drying. It's a wet ink. It still blends a little bit better. So then I'm going to take my... That was the packet fell off. I'm going to take my um, die plate and we're going to match up the two corner um, triangles because then we know that that's in the right position. And I'm going to take a oh, piece of tape and then simply tape that into position there and there. And then I'm going to pop that through the machine like that way round, okay? That cuts out, whoops. Oh, I've dropped him in the pot. Pans in. Ugh, get out when you're told. That's a naughty one, that one. Oh, well, now I've got to put all my pens back in there. That's better. <laughs> okay. So, pop all those out without further ado. Like so. Then, before I do anything else, I'm going to turn them all over. Like so. And I'm going to match up the sizes of them. So they go down in sizes. So I've got large, smaller, smaller and small. And we go down with them, large, smaller, smaller and small. So we know that those match with those. I've got them on round the back way because I want to spray them, mist them with a bit of ink. Oh. That's not ink. No, that isn't ink. Mist them with a bit of water. So not a great deal. I'm 
was spraying a lot because it wasn't coming out, but it's just a small amount. Then I'm going to take each one of them and turn around the other way. And I'm just going to sort of pleat them a little bit like that. And I'm just flicking up that little um, base point. Should we call it a base point? Because that's very important. So I'm going to do just fold them and then it's done. Fold them. Done. Fold them and done. And then down to the bottom, I'm just going to do a bit of a, a twist and then carefully open it up. Bit of a twist and a crunch. Open it up. And by spraying them with a little bit of water, it will keep them like this. They will, even though it's any card, they will actually remain like this. Okay. Then I'm going to take my glue glaze and I'm going to pop these together. And I'm going to, this is where the glue bit is. So on this base plate goes your bit of glue. And then you take your bottom piece and that centre piece sits over the base plate. Like that. And then I'm going to do that with all of these. So glue onto the base plate, the centre of that over the centre of there and stick down. Gives you something for it to stick to and it also shows you where it needs to go. So base over there, like that. And then finally for that little one onto the base plate and that fits on the top like that. So I'm just going to pop them to one side because I want to take off, wipe over here because <laughs> with my cleanest cloth ever, I just want to wipe over that because I don't want wet on the base of my card, which I'm going to bring back in there in a second. Now also, let's bring these back. As well as that, I have then got some leaves which I've cut out. Now these leaves are from one of the autumn sets. I don't think they're available anymore, I'm afraid. But they are obviously not a pansy leaf and you could use any leaves. But I just think that this one gives quite a nice change to this right from the beginning. And again, the way the place to put them is on the base plate. So if you turn it over and you can see where your base plate is there again, that little circle, I'm going to pop some glue onto the base plate again like that and then my leaf will go whoops onto there like that sorry so that when you turn it over squash it down a bit you have got your leaves poking out from the back there then we go down to the next size onto the back of the base plate and my leaf and pop that onto there like that and all the sizes are the same so a bit of glue onto the base plate I'm using glue glaze because it's got a quick dry time whoops like that and then finally, this one, which obviously shows more of the green leaf, but I think it still looks really nice and saves the faff, if you could call it that, the faff of putting loads of leaves on. So I'm just going to hold that there for a second, turn it around, and we've got the leaves. Now, I'm just going to check. I wanted to put some little, a little tiny bead or something in the centre of that. Now, what colour shall I go for? Um, I'm tempted to go for black. Yeah. So. Oh, I can open the packet, we'll, we'll get in there.
You would have thought it was a simple thing, wouldn't you? You would have thought. So I'm just going to put a little black gem into the centre of each of these. And again, there's even a little place. If you look at the pattern, you can even see where you're supposed to be putting that. Okay, so you've got your little centres there. So let's bring our card back in, which is sitting there waiting to be pansied. Oh, can't get hold of it. Now, because I chose for the leaves a set, another colour, and I chose um, olive for cutting these leaves out, so it's a slightly different colour green again, and I'm going to pop my biggest one up the top there. Um, do we use glue glaze? Yeah, I think we do, but we possibly want to be using, no, we won't use glue glaze. We'll use proper glue. Could use um, a glue gun at this stage, but so generous helping of glue. And I'm going to put that, which is the biggest one, up at the top there. And as you can see, because I sprayed it with water, it's holding that crinkle. Hopefully you can see. Holding the crinkle and holding the shape of it so that it really looks quite nice. Well, I think it does anyway. And then I'm going to go for the next size down. And I've got plenty of space to put that in. That one's going to go in that side, next size down, lift that up a little bit, we've got that dimension, yeah, glue on that side, and goes in there. Now obviously you could have more, you could do more pansies, but what I've done here today is use the pansies from just one go through with your card, so that one die plate one stamp goes through with all this there are a few literally a few pansies left over on the website at maximumcrafts.com so if you haven't got any just put a finger in that <sighs> then by all means go over and have a look okay so you can see that the leaves that i used take up some of the room as well and i think that all looks quite pretty now, I'll bring that up closer for you to be able to see. So you can see what I mean, that by using the pansy stamp, I agree that the die itself would look a bit odd without the stamp. But by using the stamp, it would look really fantastic. And then by putting a little bit of green, because they're very often a different colour in the centre, aren't they? I did make up some others here, which are with a lighter colour purple so if you can see there's a different color purple on the other side so they look nice as well um, and as I say I have just gone through with just the one color here this time but you could uh, sorry the one um, die set so that you've got your four flowers but you could go to town in fact I think I like them there too should I or shan't I and I've also got some other darker ones I think maybe I should, don't you? Don't. Maybe the others don't need leaves. Oh, playing now. Talk amongst yourselves. Oh, that looks better. Yeah, that looks better. And then maybe just one of the little ones. Oh, down there. Yeah, let's get the, the jewels back because they need a centre to them. So that's then done with two die plates. So there's four lots there all together. Oh, <laughs> the magnet holds on to it. So just pop my... So these were done in exactly the same way. They're done with the 
think it might be called amethyst, the dark colour. And um, sprinkled and watch them occulted and ooge them are flipped. And I'm going to tuck that behind. So I'm again using the back base plate there, popping my glue on, and I've tucked that behind the leaves. So there's a bit of green and everywhere. I might have now gone over the top, but well, whatever. It's Friday, a little bit of what you fancy, and I can if I want. That's what I say. Yeah. Real basket full of flowers there, isn't it? So there you go. So today's twisted frame, which you could use the um, square there, the twisted frame you could use for anything. Um, you could then start to get another frame in it as well. So you could put a third layer in it as well and then twist it again. But I think it looks really good, just the two of them. Um, if you purchased the different coloured card that I had on the Wednesday Wonder, um, this was done with a similar sort of thing. So I've got the champagne and I've got the copper together. And you can see that it's really very, very simple to do. So two squares, you can do either way, whichever one you want to be on top. Um, but one goes on the top, one goes on the bottom. Turn them round so that they are diagonal like that. This one at the top tucks under there. And this one at the bottom has to be persuaded slightly but just slips underneath there and it just holds it all together as a frame. And then you just need to decide which way around it goes and what on earth are you going to put in the middle? So I hope you have enjoyed looking at the, my version of the twisted frame. The oval one and that is lovely, but it's a bit beyond me. So I thought I'd go for easy because as I said earlier, I do think that you can do things that you see on the internet. I mean, some of the things that you see, yes, they do need a very high degree of standard, but mine don't. <laughs> you can do mine. Um, you think it's too many flowers. And a, yes, it does need a box. You're quite right. Um, but yeah, it is co covering the twisted frame now. I agree with that. I did think that. Is that better? Take them out? I mean, I've got glue on there. But that will soon dry off. What do we think? Is that better without them on there? Maybe I got carried away. Maybe I got carried away. Shows the frame up more. We'll we'll leave leave that. Okay then. I'll listen to opinion. Just scrape that bit off, and when it dries, I can use my eraser to take off that bit. But I won't do it until it dries. <laughs> so let me tell you. Um, oh, before I do go, let me say that um, thank you very much for all your wishes about my dad. He is superhuman, I tell you. Um, yesterday it was doom and gloom and we all thought we were, well, I thought I was just, <laughs> wasn't a good day yesterday. Um, but I had to take it back to the dentist because he was still in a lot of agony, which was horrible. Um, but they managed to sort out the problem. They took the offending tooth out. And this morning, he is a different man. So all is well in the Maximum Craft um, household, you'll be pleased to hear, which is good. Um, I will be back on Sunday morning for the Sunday special. The Sunday special has got lots of different techniques and some brand new products that are hot off the press and they are ready to all go out to you. I will be showing you one version of it, but there's all sorts of versions. So you'll be able to use them on Sunday. Um, then we're close coming to February. So the February card kit will be available on Wednesday. So the card kit will be announced and shown on Wednesday of next week. So I'm giving you loads of advance warning. Um, and workshops, Finally, I know that I can now get all the products. So the workshops are going on later on today for those of you who haven't already booked onto them. OK, so if you haven't got pansies, go and have a look and see what you might be able to do with your pansies. If you would like pansies, um, we have got some left, but go and get them out the cupboard. It might have been something that you got at the time and you popped to one side and you thought, no, I can't do that. But you can do that. All you need is, this is the simplest way, get one one colour of card, oh, 
glue on that. One colour of card, stamp them on there and then add a little colour to the centre. Cut them out, spray them with water on the back, not on the front because then it might make the um, ink, depending on what ink you've used, it might make that run a bit. So spray it on the back and then just fold them together a bit. They're quite tough really. Give them a little bit of a squeeze and then use your base plate. Whoops. Use your base plate as your guide that everything goes on the base plate. Glue on the base plate, the bottom bit on the base plate. Turn it over, put your flower, your, sorry, your leaves onto the base plate and then stick that down like that. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already subscribed, do please do so and persuade all your lovely friends that that's exactly what they need to do and then they won't be missing out either. Um, and uh, have a great day. Thank you for joining me. Take care. Bye.